She wore it in a crop, a loosely flowing crop, which had so many rows of curls in it that the top row was only one curl. Moderately buxom was her shape and quite womanly too. But sometimes, yes sometimes, she even wore a pinafore and how charming that was. Oh, she was indeed a gushing thing. As a young gentleman had observed in verse, in the poet's corner of a provincial newspaper was the youngest Miss Pecksniff. Mr. Pecksniff was a moral man, a grave man, a man of noble sentiments and speech, and he had her christened, and he had had her christened Mercy. Mercy, oh, what a charming name for such a pure-souled being as the youngest Miss Pecksniff. Her sister's name was Charity. There was a, there was, there was a good thing, Mercy and Charity, and Charity, with her fine, strong sense and her mild yet not reproachful gravity, was so well named and did so well set off and illustrate her sister. What a pleasant sight was that, the contrast they presented. To see each loved and loving one sympathizing with and devoted to and leaning on and yet correcting and counterchecking and, as it were, antidoting, antidoting the other. To behold each damsel in her very admiration, admiration admiration of her sister, setting up in business for herself on an entirely different principle and announcing no connection with over the way and if the quality of goods at that establishment don't please you, you are respectfully invited to favour me with a call. And the crowning circumstance of her whole delightful catalogue was that both the fair creatures were so utter utterly unconscious of all this. They had no idea of it. They no more thought or dreamed of it than Mr. Pecksniff did. Nature played them off against each other. They had no hand in it, the two Miss Pecksniffs. It has been remarked that Mr. Pecksniff was, was a moral man. So he was. Perhaps there never was a more moral man than Mr. Pecksniff, especially in his conversation and correspondence. It was once said of him, by a homely admirer that he had a fortun fortunatus's purse of good sentiments, purse of good sentiments in his inside. In this, particular, in this particular, he was like the girl in the fairy tale, except that he, if they were not actual diamonds which fell from his lips, they were the very brightest paste and shone prodigiously. He was a most exemplary man, fuller of virtuous precept than a copybook. Some people liken him to a direction post, which is always telling the way to a place and never goes there. But these were his enemies, the shadows cast by his brightness. That was all. His very throat was moral. You saw a good deal of it.